So let's now discuss how we can use householder transformations to transform a matrix A into an upper triangular matrix R. Hmm. Okay, so we start with the matrix A, and here I depict a 5 by 4 matrix, where each of these x's is some arbitrary value in the matrix. And um, how does the algorithm proceed? Well, you start by identifying the first column of the matrix. And from this first column, you compute a householder vector so that I minus U0, U0, Hermitian transpose divided by tau 0, if you apply that to that matrix, you end up introducing zeros right here. So what that really means is that we've taken our matrix A and multiplied it by a matrix as such. So at the end of that, we end up with a matrix that looks like this. Then we say, okay, if we now compute a householder transformation from this vector and we leave the first row alone, then we can introduce zeros right here. Well, the householder transformation would look something like this. But we want to leave the first row alone, so we could create a matrix that looks like that, such that if you apply it to this matrix, it now introduces zeros right here. All right. So what that means is that up here, we need to introduce a matrix that looks like this. And at the end of that, the contents of our matrix now look as such. And you can see where this is going. In the next step, you use this part of the matrix to compute a householder vector. The householder transformation then looks like I minus U2, U2, Hermitian transpose over tau 2. You would need two ones here and zeros here. And when you apply that to the matrix, well, first of all, we need to apply that to A as well, so I'll just sort of stop writing that. And at the end of that, you will have introduced zeros right here. And then we compute a household transformation from that. We apply it in such a way that the first three rows are left alone. That introduces a zero here. It would mean another householder transformation that applies to A, and then we're left with an upper triangular matrix right here. Since we started with a rectangular matrix, we also ended up with an extra row of zeros. Obviously, we'd have more rows of zeros if the matrix was more you know, rectangular. And what we recognize here is that this is our unitary matrix A0, H0 that we wanted. This is our unitary matrix H1, H2, and H3. Okay, And this times A then leaves us with this matrix right here. Now, we don't yet have a QR factorization. Why? We have not yet aggregated all of these into a unitary matrix Q. But we're pretty close. Now, for many of the applications that we're going to run into, it is not even necessary to form Q explicitly. It suffices to store the householder vectors that we defined this way in the places that were zeroed out by them in the matrix so that we can later apply the householder transformations individually as opposed to aggregating them into one unitary matrix. And we'll see that shortly.